Shiva Indian Science Podcast and I'm your host Pallavi and you're tuned in to another exciting episode of Tech Trends 2024. In this series, we delve into the upcoming tech landscape with our leading tech consulting partners. In today's episode, we're exploring next-gen employee experience in tech-driven workplace. Joining us is Ajay Gachi, our EY India tech consulting partner with two decades of experience in shaping HR technology across the globe. Ajay's expertise in digital HR and transformative technologies is set to enlighten us on the future of the world. Ajay, thank you for joining this podcast. It's a pleasure to have you in this episode. Thank you so much, Pallavi. It's a real pleasure to be here. To start off, Ajay, uh, could you elaborate on the concept of digital employee experience integration across HR platforms and its significance, please? Uh, yes, Pallavi, sure. Uh, firstly, right at the outset, employee experience remains at the very core and a top focus for CHROs, right? It's a key pivotal lever for organizations to attract, retain, and nurture top talent in a competitive industry. Now, uh, it is significant because it directly impacts employee value proposition, employee engagement and satisfaction, productivity retention, and thus revenues and profitability, right? Uh, the key objective uh, in digital employee experience is to provide a single, seamless, consumer-grade, hyper-personalized experience. Now, the challenge in that, like the topic of the discussion, is that there is now a profusion of applications and siloed applications and processes, uh, even at the largest and the most mature of organizations, right? What this hap what this leads to is uh, very different experiences for an employee who has to work across multiple applications and different ways of working. There's duplication of effort, there's manual transactions, suboptimal insights, loss of productivity, inefficiency, ineffectiveness, et cetera. Right. Why this question arises, uh, just to elaborate a little bit, is that now the whole HR platform space has really exploded into literally thousands of applications. This is due to the evolving maturity, being an intensely active space, super specialization and digital AI innovations. Um, this is why large organizations can end up having multiple applications. Now, what are these type of applications? In the past, you, you had these large foundational HCM platforms like um, SAP, SuccessFactors, Workday, Oracle, Davinbox, etc. These used to be one size fits all end to end covering the entire hire to retire life cycle, apart from you know handling the foundational masters and structures and employee data, etc. But now these are no longer enough and the HCM landscape has evolved. So number one, there are now best of breed applications. This is because of super specialization in processes and whole new subcategories are, are currently there. Let me take two examples, right? So learning, uh, the foundational platform just had learning management system, but now the best of breed vendors have evolved into new categories like learning experience platforms like Edcast and Degreed. There's learning content generation like uh, Skillsoft and Coursera, learning gamification as represented by Exonify. There's learning assessments like Metal and TalView and micro learning. Similarly, recruitment uh, gets into, apart from applicant tracking, which is the only uh, area that was there, into candidate relationship management like Smashfly, candidate experience, sourcing platforms like ARIA, assessment and screening platforms like HireView, Pymetrics, and so on and so forth. And this exists for every area of HR. So now, apart from foundational, you have these best of breed applications. And then there are these specialized digital and AI vendors, right? I mean, these are, uh, because of the AI revolution, you have, uh, you know, every area, like talent management areas, there are AI-based vendors like Eightfold, AI.AI, Skyhive, etc. And then there are the overall AI vendors, like Gen AI vendors, like OpenAI, Google AI, blockchain vendors like uh, Bitwage, Cronebank, et cetera, robotic process automation vendors, virtual agent vendors. So, uh, and then there are the analytics platforms, productivity collaboration uh, communication platforms, employee engagement platforms, and so on. There's, there's a huge variety of applications that exist now. So what is the solution to this, right? So what has evolved is an employee experience layer where you get all of these applications and present a single face to the employee. Uh, it's an integrated single window, a single insights layer. Um, you know, it integrates everything together and gives that one seamless consumer grade personalized experience for the employee. Thank you, Vijay, for the uh, invaluable insights. Now, as you know, no conversation is incomplete without AI. How is AI revolutionizing various aspects of HR? 
So Pallavi, like you said, AI is, uh, you know, impacting and revolutionizing every aspect and dimension of HR, right? It's an amazing time with intense developments in the HR space. There are a lot of use cases and value that is already being adopted and generated, but the future promises to be far more exciting and fascinating uh, because of um, uh, a whole lot of um, uh, uh, technologies and possibilities that are exponentially multiplying. Right. So even if you look at artificial intelligence spectrum and related areas, it's a wide area comprising of generative AI, machine learning, deep learning, robotic process automation, natural language processing, uh, computer vision, conversational AI, AR, VR, XR, right? social collaboration, Internet of Things, blockchain, etc. Now, because we don't have as much time, I would probably just talk in summary of a few. Right. So AI as its basic, basic level, right, automation it goes a long way to eliminate from work, right? Uh, a lot of manual, repetitive, um, you know, transactional, administrative and compliance related activities. This is what, uh, because 60% of many organizations, 60, 70, 80% is just this, right? So you take all of this away, which can leave HR to focus on business partnering, strategy and policy. Uh, so take an example of an AI technology like robotic process automation. There are literally hundreds of examples across every HR process, uh, which are use cases like pre-employment checks to employment contracts, payroll streamlining, leave administration, timesheet submissions, and you know, like I said, hundreds of examples. But what AI does is go beyond and actually help you do processes much better, including activities that have always been challenges for HR. It actually elevates that process itself, right? Uh, a few examples here, like recruitment, right? Uh, every aspect of recruitment can get benefited, right? Automated sourcing, where you're not talking of double the uh, resumes coming in or sourcing, but you know, multiple times, exponential, right? Contextual search, deep contextual search is again something that uh, is, is an exciting area. Talent branding, social and network recruiting. There are JDs that are now created automatically, right? And updated. There's chatbots, there's video interviews, right? Where uh, start to end, it's 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 done. And then there are thousands of automated auto grading things that come out, right? Candidate skill matching happens. Uh, best fit candidates, uh, you know, predicting candidate success, so on and so forth. If you take learning as an example, you know, there's personalized learning paths. Automated future skilling and reskilling recommendations, right? Learning in the flow of work, micro learning, gamification, learning effectiveness, uh, adaptive learning. You know, there's so many areas that are now become possible and, you know, elevated because of this. Then there's the whole talent management, marketplace, skills, skill based resource management, uh, automated career pathing, and things like that now. Now, let me go just very briefly based on technologies. I talked of some processes, right? So, AR, VR, XR, right? Immersive technologies where the onboarding can become a completely different um, elevated experience through AR, VR, right? You can familiarize a candidate, you know, live. Uh, through you know, on the culture, teams, work environment, tasks. You know, you can do on the job trainings, uh, immersions, 3D modeling, visual overlays, you know, the, 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 so many applications. Machine learning and deep learning, you know, is applied almost everywhere, right? Uh, career path recommendation, like I said, job standardization, targeted sourcing, uh, the social and collaboration. Every process has that, you know, social recruitment, social learning, collaboration, internal social networks, remote and hybrid workers working in an immersive virtual environment, gamification across processes. And then there's IoT and blockchain. These are, you know, amazing technologies, which is in the midterm to long term play, but lots and lots of amazing applications, right? So smart workplaces, wearables, um, badges, automated attendance tracking, headset simulations, etc. And blockchain, again, some examples of this would be, you know, resume validation, background verification, learning education repositories, cross border payments. I mean, the, the mind boggles at the kind of, you know, applications and how HR is revolutionized. But let me stop at that because, you know, I can go on and on about so many of these uh, examples. Thank you, Ajay. Uh, as you've mentioned how AI is revolutionizing the processes and technology, could you also share some examples of uh, conversation AI and virtual assistants being utilized in HR to improvise engagement and employee experience? Yeah, that's one area that's actually become commonplace. Like every organization has a chatbot or is in the process of deploying one, right? These are fairly common and they have a big impact on engagement and EX, uh, employee experience. But the maturity and features are constantly evolving and becoming so exciting. So currently, like you said, what are some examples, right? So you have this employee chatbot, which is common now, right? Leave balance, payroll inquiries, benefits, 
tickets, uh, you know, uh, services kind of inquiry, uh, overtime, expenses, you know, all of these are anywhere there. I think everybody is using them now. But then all the processes have virtual agents and, you know, conversational AI now. So onboarding, for example, new hire guidance and help, uh, managing all the to-do lists for managers and new hires both, right? Uh, recruitment will have candidate chatbots entirely for candidates, uh, have job seeker support, status, documentation, career recommendations, etc. Uh, and the recruitment team itself, uh, you know, would have a um, virtual assistant for scheduling, status, summary, background checks, etc. Uh, similarly, learning virtual assistant, right? Learning course recommendations, uh, skill updates, training simulations, coaching. Uh, performance um, is another area, right? Facilitating real-time feedback and encouraging employees and peers for feedback collection, goal setting, performance history, so on and so forth, right? These are the common uses to answer your question. But now where it is moving is, as I said, really exciting. So, and uh, when you actually combine conversational AI with a lot of AI technologies like uh, Gen AI, machine learning, NLP, and all that, it, it becomes so much better. The combinatorial power is one plus one is equal to five, not two, right? I mean, that's how it works. So Gen AI, for example, right, is taking the concept of a digital assistant to a whole new level, right? Uh, to a completely personalized and contextual uh, work concierge, right, for you, an assistant concierge. So here, it is an intelligent concierge that not only schedules meetings, but identifies the optimal times, patterns, and all of that. It can guide you through, you know, personalized training, mentors, resources, and, you know, it's it's like an amazing area, right, which will get more and more intel. So virtual assistants are becoming intelligent, sensitive, personalized, and revolutionizing. That's why the way we work, communicate, and consume services, right? So, for example, you know, there is neuro-linguistic programming, right? Um, so NLP uh, takes the understanding and generation of human language to a completely different level so that it's natural, local, and allows nuanced conversations. So there's a text and voice maturity, complex transactions, smarter features, advanced voice, multi-language, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, then there's a the contextual understanding. Uh, a virtual assistant understands where the employee is coming from, that role, the preferences, uh, you know, uh, and then caters to the employee, right, in terms of this. That's that's a great application again, uh, which provides proactive assistance. The improved emotional intelligence is 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 a great application again sentiment analysis right user sentiment and emotions in real time are are monitored to tailor appropriate responses reflect empathy be sensitive to a user's emotional state the predictive insights that anticipate needs and offer proactive assistance the personalization right uh, in terms of patterns previous history uh, and then you know this transparency security and all the compliances and all that so so that evolution is going to be very fast and steep and you know uh, add a great value to to employees um i hope i answered your question pallavi yes sir um lastly pivoting towards the analytics uh, question to you is what role does hr analytics play in providing actionable insights and in enhancing the employee experience Oh, yes, HR analytics is actually one of the most potent levers to provide insights, value, and to enhance employee experience, right? So if you actually look at HR analytics, there are multiple levels of maturity, there are five levels of maturity, right? And the higher you go, the better the value and the employee experience. Now, what is happening actually, right, uh, is that most, many organizations, right, including very mature organizations, are stuck at the lower levels, level one, two, or three, right, in reactive reporting and operational only. Um, and I'll explain why that gives a very bad experience to employees, right? So, so why this happens is also is because there are some basic foundational principles for uh, digital systems and all of that. Single source of data, there's harmonized uh, master data, integrated processes, systems, and data. And without this, you can't go up the value chain. But Fortune 500 com organizations also, I continue to look at so many organizations where uh, there's an army of people who spend days, you know, across the organization manipulating Excel sheets to get very, very base data on demographics, headcount, or, you know, what is demanded by the senior management, right? Now, uh, all of this, uh, you know, leads to um, uh, quite a bad employee experience, right? You're not even able to go up the value chain and just stuck at that level, and it causes problems all over. Now, how HR analytics adds to employee experience is it, it caters to all the employee experience principles, right? It, 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 it shows you for your context. It gives you feedback on what you're doing. It shows outcomes. It shows progress. There's transparency. There's traceability. Uh, 
it actually aids and actually runs planning processes it helps you in the flow of work you know all of that actually helps you um, uh, have great employee experience so i talked of hyper personalization right so when we talk of dashboards and analytics it is personalized to every role right at a deep level whether you are a cxo or a head of business or an employee or hr or at all levels you get what you need at that point of time and very very uh, you know contextual to you uh, that information at your fingertips helps you in your work right uh, directly in your flow of work the visualization is very well presented meaningful summaries charts graphs advanced visualization techniques etc now a few more examples just to show you how it actually adds value is you know see standard transactional reports and reporting i mean every application has it there are thousands of these reports uh, you know the value is questionable uh, but when you go beyond is where i i'd like to take a few examples right when i said it helps you in the planning of work so if you see strategic workforce planning social media analytics or salary planning compensation planning right uh, analytics has a huge role to play in forecasting and simulations and all of that uh one great application is the integrated nature of analytics that you can do right it uh, across all applications and processes the value chains rather right so integrated talent management uh, has value only when it works across processes so the correlation of performance to rewards or skills to learning or employee engagement and experience to attrition and retention right and then there's the predictive analytics like right? which is the most likely scenarios in that context so these are the early warning systems or the early flight prediction risk profiling you know which are the categories which are locations businesses types of employees who are most at risk to leave right so that you can take um, corrective actions there's optimization analytics right which is which shows the optimal scenarios like hiring channel optimization and cost optimization right i talked of forecasting manpower demand forecasting you know where you examine future possibilities that that has an amazing value uh prescriptive analytics is you know in terms of what is the best that can happen at any particular point of time right when you are hiring what is a successful profile for hire and best assimilation into the organization right so and then there's a the problem identification with statistical analysis now the kpis and metrics is another great example right uh, working with dashboards or balanced scorecards which gives you feedback and outcomes and effectiveness and efficiency measures for every process for every role right so it could be attrition or let's take recruitment then it's a time to hire or cost of hire or quality of hire right and then working with benchmarking it can spur and drive innovation and optimization um so again i think i can go on and on but i think this uh, at least takes a uh, quite a few examples and shows how hr analytics actually uh, you know enhances employee experience and provides value thank you ajay uh, that brings us to the end of this episode uh, thank you for sparing your time and joining us and sharing all your insights with us and our listeners It's been an enlightening conversation. My pleasure, Pallavi, entirely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. On that note, thank you to all our listeners. Don't forget to subscribe to our Tech Trends series across all our podcast platforms, and stay tuned for more episodes where we continue to unravel the latest in tech trends and innovations. Until next time, this is Pallavi signing off. Mm-hmm.